Hi there my magical star beings, this is Psychic Siren Tara and welcome to the channel. In today's reading we're going to be taking a look at the tea on your crush. So please be aware this is a journal reading, only take what resonates, leave the rest. But before we get started with your pile selection, I'd just like to thank and give a quick word to my sponsorship Keen. Towards the end of last year, I felt like me and my partner have gotten a bit disconnected in our relationship. So when Keen came along, I thought it would be a good time to get a reading from one of their tarot readers. I asked about the future of my love life with my partner, and she predicted that our relationship would deepen through the upcoming holiday. And at the time of the reading, I couldn't see how, but when December came to pass, I could start to see what she said about our relationship was true. Last year we dedicated a lot of time to this YouTube channel, so we barely had time to spend together because we were working most hours of the day. But we planned ahead to take a break in December. It allowed us to spend time together again and be in each other's presence more. This definitely did bring us a lot closer in our relationship, as she said. I also got to spend Christmas with his family and we had such beautiful moments together that helped me learn more about him and his loved ones. We got to find our way back to each other and strengthen our connection again so what she said definitely resonated with what happened. She also mentioned us making future plans together and we just recently decided that we should move to a bigger place. The love reading I got was very beautiful and sweet and every detail mentioned was accurate and actually made sense. I'm so grateful for Keen for providing such good readings and gifted psychics. So if you would like to know more about your life or anything in general, Keen connects you with gifted psychics, tarot readers and astrologers like myself who are available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, so you can always get a reading whenever it suits you. All you have to do is create an account and you'll be able to choose from the hundreds of readers who are online right now. These readers all have their own unique specialties and gifts, so whether it be about your love life or what to do next in your career or just life in general, they are able to provide a deeper understanding of your situation and how to navigate it from there. You can choose whichever reader best suits your needs and you'll be able to connect with them via phone call or text chat. It's always best to get a personal psychic reading if you'd like more accurate information on your situation because it is directed only to your energies. Now here's your chance to get a personalized reading from Keen. As a new customer on Keen, you can try your first five minutes for only one dollar. Go to trykeen.com slash psychic siren tarot or click the link in my description box to receive a discount on your first reading. Thank you Keen for bringing this partnership opportunity and for sponsoring today's video. That's trykeen.com slash psychic siren tarot or click the link in my description box below to get your own personalized reading today at a huge discount. So getting back to your pile selection, we have three piles to choose from today. The first pile we have the Eight of Wands from the Light Sears Tower with the Purple Agate Crystal. For pile number two, we have the Sun card with the Crystal Citrine on the card. This is the Crystal Magic Tarot. And we have Howlite. Okay, and then for pile number three, we have the Ace of Wands from the Tarot of the Divine. And we have Fire Agate. So I'm going to give you a few seconds to pick a pile. Pick whichever pile you're most drawn to, the one that is calling out to your soul the most, and that will be a pile for today. But of course, if you're drawn to more than one pile, always trust your intuition. Once you're done picking a pile, please find the timestamps for your pile in the description box below, and then I'll see you at your reading. 
Hi there, my pound number ones. If you chose this purple agate crystal and the light seer's tarot with the eight of wands card, this reading is for you. We're going to be taking a look at the tea on your crush. So, you know, I immediately get the intuitive feeling that your crush may have a large friendship group or may just be very well known by many and, you know, very well liked and respected by many. I feel like you're, oh, I just heard ex. Maybe some of you are crushing on your ex. Or maybe that's something to do with their ex. Something about their ex is coming through. What is spirit trying to show me? Okay, perhaps their ex was like, the type of party type of person or like that type of extroverted person where they just know everyone and they introduced your crush to a lot of people. I am getting that impression. Um, and you know, right behind this Eight of Wands, we see the Knight of Cups. So I, I do get the feeling my pile ones because I did shuffle this tarot deck to get the energies of pile one. I do have the strong feeling that your crush may actually have hidden feelings towards you or a hidden crush on you, whether you realize it or not. Yeah, I'm getting that strongly. And I think your crush, like Spirit is telling me they're very loud and expressive. Um, They're very much like fun to be around. They have that type of, um, Spirit is using the word pizzazz to their personality, where I think if you were to spend time with your crush, you'd find that maybe they'd even try to make you laugh, or um, it just would be very exciting, they'd never be a boring, or, you know, maybe there could be some awkward moments, but I don't think this person is necessarily boring, per se. <laughs> Okay, so spirit guys are my pile number ones. Knight of Cups. You see, we just shuffled the deck. Oh. <laughs> I cannot make this up. Oh my gosh. Spirit guys are my pile number one. The tea on their crush, please. The tea on their crush. I also picked up energetically on sports. Like, your person may like sports, your crush. Okay, let's look at the cards we have. We spoke about uh, an ex. And here we see at the back of the deck the Eight of Cups, which is all about walking away, releasing something. Five of Swords right, right behind it. So, the tea on your crush may be that they... Or it doesn't have to be their ex, but like there's some people your crush has walked away from because they betrayed your person. I keep saying your person, your crush's um, trust. And someone told them, like a loyal friend told them, because I'm looking at this birdie on his ear and it reminds me of that quote, a little birdie told me. So the tea on your crush is that your crush specifically looks for the type of people to date that they can trust. Your crush keeps like rejecting people that are untrustworthy or feels unattracted to people that are untrustworthy. So we have the Knight of Wands. Yeah, they're very fun to be around. The Four of Wands, like, oh my gosh. The Ace of Pentacles. I think they are physically attracted to you, Pile 1. If, like, Especially if you haven't spoken before. There's something about them being very um, like drawn to you and attracted to you physically. And if you have spoken to each other, I definitely do see that uh, they would like to spend more physical time with you here with the Ace of Pentacles and Knight of Cups. I'm not reading the tarot traditionally, but just based off my intuition. Of course, the tarot has its own meanings, but I'm also using my own intuition. We have the sun, if you were drawn to pile two. We have the four of cups in the reverse. We have the two of wands. So I feel intuitively like they're kind of checking you out, pile one. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that's a T on your crush. We have the Queen of Wands. We have the Devil. We have the Chariot. The Tower. The Six of Swords. The Four of Pentacles. And we have the Queen of Pentacles. Okay, my pile number ones. I strongly sense that this Queen of Wands energy is um, your crush's ex. Because we have the devil right next to it, the tower, the six of swords, which is all about transitioning away um, some kind of change in their connection, moving on, moving away. But I think with the four of pentacles, the T here is that they may still somewhat hold on to their ex. Uh, but I don't think it's in a way where they want their ex back. To be honest, I think this person has come to a breaking point. I don't know why their ex is coming through, but we asked for the T, so I guess we're getting it. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to make this part long, but I'm just telling you what I see here. Um, and it may be significant to you because, you know, you're asking about your crush. So I think it's for you maybe just to keep in mind if you do, you know, start start making a move towards your crush or if you do um you know start talking to them in any way this is something for you to keep in mind beforehand i'm not saying to let your crush go but to just take it slow with them because i i don't necessarily see them wanting their ex back i think they've come to a point within their self-worth where they no longer want that for themselves. They feel dissatisfied with how their previous relationships have gone. And especially with this person per se, like specifically. Um, and I think like they're kind of looking for, for more stability now. Something less toxic and harmful to them because I don't think their ex... Um, had any good intentions towards them whatsoever with the devil here you know they were kind of toxic in a way and kind of wanted to keep reeling them in but I feel here with the tower some kind of transformation is happening to your crush it may seem I'm hearing the word distraught like something really distraught they're going through Something really crushing, painful to go through emotionally. But in the end, it is eventually going to transform them, change something within them, help them learn something about themselves. And I do see your crush wanting something a lot more stable now where, of course, they're still healing and moving on. I think they need time for that. But I do see them looking at you as this queen of pentacles energy regardless of your gender i intuitively feel this is your energy where i see you being a lot more grounded a lot more stable a lot more down to earth and i think that is why they are attracted to you you give off this very peaceful vibe um and i heard the word overachiever so I'm just being honest, like with what I hear, I think it's an amazing thing to be an overachiever because I'm an overachiever, but it's like your crush feels attracted to that. I'm not saying you are. I Maybe they think of you like that, but it's like they feel attracted to that within you because it's like I heard that before the Queen of Pentacles came out. They think that it's like really hot. They think that it's really powerful of you you know to be that type of person that wants to achieve your goals and really wants to you know level up within your own career or within school whatever this is it's like and I think they really enjoy your calm demeanor they like how responsible you are they like your stability and they feel like you would be a good match to them in more of a long-term setting so with the energies I'm seeing here they're kind of checking you out kind of like 
thinking, hmm, pile number one, I could potentially be interested in them. And I see them looking at you as more of that type of person they'd hold on to in the long run. Um, and I just heard wifey husband material, like that is how your crush is viewing you. And that's a T on your crush pile one. I feel this is telling me that your crush wouldn't move towards you unless they were fully ready. Unless they were fully ready to, you know, totally commit to you, they'd they'd keep their distance a little bit because I feel them looking at you as the total package that like Spirit was showing me a list and you know how sometimes when we're looking for love we create like this mental list of what we want in our romance it's like you match that criteria of what they want I don't know if that's flattering to you or not but this is the tea on your crush um and Spirit showed me cake as as like um metaphor and you know how they use cake in slang <laughs> So there's maybe something about your body that's sexy and I see a person wanting to look for someone where they perceive them as loyal. I, f I strongly feel like your crush's ex could have cheated on them. You know, I feel like if you were to ever hang out with them and even just become friends with them, I feel like you'd have a lot of fun. You'd always have a laugh with them. And I feel like they, the tea on them is they'd be that type of person that would want to make you laugh. That would want to make you smile, you know. Um, <laughs> maybe they're even attracted to your laugh and smile. Maybe that's a tea here on them. I do see them being someone, you know, you can celebrate with. And I do see them being someone like very happy-go-lucky. And romantic too with the Knight of Cups. I think they're truly a romantic person, but I think they've been romantic to the wrong people that didn't appreciate it in the past. And so I feel they have they have their wants of like finding a person that is just as romantic as them. Okay, spirit guides on my pile number ones. The tea on their crush, please. The tea on their crush. So I do see them being very fun. Like, you know, they may go out on the weekends. They may go out with their friends a lot. I see them being at home with their friends a lot. Um, or just going out a lot, doing things. I, I don't think your crush is the type to necessarily stay at home on weekends. Um, I, I do see them liking to go out a lot. And I do think you two could even have a good friendship, not just relationship if it were to move to that level, but as well as friendship, you know. But I also do see them being quite responsible. If they're at an age now where they can work, um, you know, I do see them going after those opportunities and saving up and those things. But if they're still in school, you know, same thing, but different in a way. Um, so I do see them being someone responsible with their money, you know, they like to have fun, go out, but they're also responsible. They know they know how to budget, I'm hearing. They know how to take care of themselves. They're clean, is what I'm hearing. Like, their home is clean, or their apartment, or their room, whatever situation or scenario. They may have a significant music taste. Uh, what is the T on their crush? Eight of Cups. Yeah, Spirit keeps talking about this X. Can we get new information, not the X, please? The Nine of Cups. You see, they're wishing for something else. Something different than what they had in the past. And I think you sort of match up to the kind of standard they've set for themselves in dating moving forward. But I think you maybe need to get to know each other a little bit more to, to truly see if you both, you know, feel that way. But I do see a lot of potential here for you and your crush, if I'm going to be honest, pile one. The Nine of Cups is about a wish fulfillment. And I think if they... 
if they have their eyes open, I think you could potentially be like a perfect match to your person, to your crush. So the first card we have is temperance. So I think just be a little bit patient with them. Give them some time to heal. Because I feel like they just got out of this relationship or it's still fresh or it's been a few months or it's just taking a long time. You know, if it's been a while, it's just taking a long time for them to get over this person, especially if they've been together a long time or they had a lot of history or if it was on and off or they were just very attached or first love. I don't know what it is, but something here about still moving on. Ace of Swords. King of Cups. Ten of Swords. Two of Pentacles. I think they're wishing and looking for more balance in their emotional relationships, in their connections. Because although I do see your person, your crush being someone, you know, a lot of fun to be around, they are still a sensitive person within I don't think they'd admit that to the outside world and if I say that and that catches some of you off guard even if they have a hard exterior they show to the world I'm not saying they do but for some of you they do for others of you they don't they're comfortable with their with showing their emotions to the world but deep down the T is your crush is a sensitive person. Um, they feel things very deeply. They're sentimental, deeply sentimental. And it takes them a lot of time to get over things. Their trust has truly been betrayed. You know, by someone they trusted, by someone they loved. And for them, I think uh, they're sort of overthinking it in their mind. Like, did I do enough? Did I give enough love? Where did I go wrong? And I think they're sort of blaming themselves when they shouldn't. And I think that's a process because I think when you've been betrayed in some way, you kind of go through those kind of stages of sort of like letting go of those that person, healing from that person. So, yeah, the tea on your crush is there. It's very thoughtful when it comes to people and their relationships. I feel strong Scorpio energy, water sign energy, fire sign energy from your crush. But I think this breakup, this betrayal of trust has matured them, has opened up their eyes in a way, you know, is going to eventually lead to strengthening them. And I think right now they're looking for a much more emotionally deeper connection there. Maybe realizing that um, their ex wasn't fully emotionally available to them or loyal. And maybe now they are reconsidering their choices in romantic connections and who they, who they let around them. Uh, we have the Seven of Wands. We have the Three of Pentacles. So it seems they want a connection where the other person will fight for them. It felt like for them, they were fighting for that connection, but the other person wasn't fighting for them. And I think they want someone loyal. I think they want someone that is truly going to work with them and not against them. Fight for the relationship, not fight with them. Because I do see them experiencing certain conflicts where it's like unnecessary. So I see them now looking for more balance, more of that kind of stable love that is going to last a lot longer. Have that stability, have that long term aspect, longevity to it. And with the Ace of Swords, they're kind of thinking about what they want in love with the Nine of Cups. But I think with Temperance, they're also aware they need to be patient, heal, alchemize from the past first. We have the Ten of Wands, Knight of Swords, King of Swords. So your crush, the T on them, is that they're a person that is also very intelligent um, they may not always show that intelligence to others, but I do see them being very intelligent. I do see them having a great mind. Five of Wands wants to pop out. They think a lot. You know, they're always thinking about where they want to be 
and how they can get there. I think the tea on your crush is that they're very responsible here with the Ten of Wands. You know, I'm reading it in a different way because we have the Knight of Swords, which is about rushing towards where we want to be. The Ten of Wands can sometimes be working so hard that, you know, we have all these burdens on our back. I think your your crush is a hard worker. They may run. They may take care of their health in some way. Last messages for the T on their crush. Sorry that I made it all about the X. Do you see they just hijacked the whole reading? Three of Cups. I didn't want that. <laughs> okay, we have Judgment. Like, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this reading. Justice. I don't know if I even want to put it out. We have the Page of Cups. We have the Emperor. The Wheel of Fortune. And the World. Two of Swords at the back of the deck. Okay, so the T here. Sort of like advice from your spirit guides. Talk to them. Justice, you know, um, speak to them. Be your true self around them. Maybe develop a friendship with them with the Three of Cups. Get to know them better. You know, they are still healing. They are still letting go of some things. But that doesn't mean that you can't already start a connection with them. And I think the T here is they may have even thought about starting a friendship with you. Because it kind of looks like this man is thinking here getting ideas from above so it's like it's right opposite the three of cups so I'm getting the impression that you know they may have already thought of you know trying to speak to you and become friends with you develop a friendship with you they also want to be that person that's like a good partner that's what I feel here with the emperor uh they're they're kind of like thinking about how can I become a better partner not in the sense of they're with anyone or with you right now, but it's like, instead of just wishing and waiting for this new love, you know, someone that will commit to me, how can I improve myself and work on myself and become the best partner so that I attract the best partner? And I see that kind of being their mindset right now. Instead of, you know, blaming someone from the outside, or maybe this is what they're moving towards if they're not here yet. Instead of blaming outside influences, being honest with ourselves and, you know, thinking, how can I become the better partner so that I attract the better partner? With the Wheel of Fortune, the T here is we definitely see something changing. If this is where I'll leave your reading, pal one. I really hope this reading resonated. If it did, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I can't wait to see you in my next reading. Bye! Hi there my pal number twos, if you chose this How Like Crystal and the Sun card with Citrine from the Crystal Magic Tarot, this reading is for you. We're going to take a look at the T on your crush. So as soon as I got to your reading pile too, I smelled the scent of flowers. I guess that could resonate differently for everyone, you know, like, for example, there could be someone watching here that's attracted to women. Um, maybe the tea on her is that she loves flowers, um, that if you were to ever date her, she loves flowers. I know that sounds generic, but I really smelled flowers or something about flowers could be significant. They could like flowers, even if they're not a woman. Let's just see. Okay. Spirit guides on my pile number twos. Spirit guides on my pile number twos. May I please look into the tea on their crush? What is this flower thing coming up for? We have the hermit, blue chalcedony, and... Two of Wands with Celestite. Maybe they could like flowers or plants in their home because I'm being very drawn to the plant here. 
and like there's plants growing here like they could like because sometimes I see it the hermit as you know kind of being in her own comfort spending time alone I know that's not what the hermit card means but sometimes I see the hermit card like that um so you know it could bring them peace of mind especially when they're stressed out or overthinking you know they could like plants in their home I don't know why that's coming through spirit guides of pile number twos Spirit guides of pile number two. So I almost felt like these cards cut my finger. Like what? What is that supposed to mean? Let me just close my eyes. What does that mean, spirit? What does that mean? The spirit is showing me like a letter. Let's see your cards. We have death with jet. The lovers with terminated quartz. Hmm. Okay, I understand, I think. I think I understand. Let me just get all your cards out. We have the Ten of Pentacles with Emerald. The World in the Reverse with Turquoise. The Six of Pentacles with Yellow Topaz. The Hierophant with Sodalite. The High Priestess with Labradite. The Ten of Wands with Aquamarine. The Ace of Coins with Moss Agate. The Devil with Amethyst. Queen of Wands with Tanzanite. Okay, I'm just going to put these cards here. At the back of the deck, we have the Five of Cups in the reverse. Well, I'm smelling the scent of the flowers again. Do you feel very confused when it comes to your crush pile too? Because the reason I'm saying so is because in pile one, I was easily able to channel messages. But with you, it sort of feels like I, I'm trying to understand what's going on here, but I can't understand. So it, it's like a huge energy shift. And I feel like as I tap into your person's energy, it feels a lot more ground. You know, you are showing up as a high priestess here, pile two. This tells me that you're very intuitive and you can get messages very easily. But since the lovers is opposite the high priestess, maybe you're so, um, I want to say, quote unquote, in love with your crush or like so attached to the idea of, you know, like a connection with them maybe like attached to the outcome that it's sort of blocking off your intuition because I can say that myself like when I try to read cards on myself and if you've been feeling this then this message is for you you know where I try to read cards on myself and I'm so attached to the situation emotionally that I can't look at it from an unbiased perspective and read on it that the messages don't make sense so if you've been dealing with that per se you know, the T here is um, maybe like the attachment to the outcome. So I'd say, have you tried to read on your crush before? Or have you tried to like intuitively feel out their energy or try to figure them out in a way? Because if you have and it's only made you more confused, this is the T. This is the reason why. And there's something also about like a perception change. Your perception of this person may change. The tea on your crush pile too. Yeah, this energy definitely feels a lot more grounded. Oh my gosh, did the light just flicker? The energy definitely feels a lot more grounded. So I'm going to close my eyes and see what I can get clairvoyantly because it feels like there's a sort of block between me reading this energy. Maybe your person's, your crush's energy is also just very protected where some people are so protected by their spirit guides that 
if we try to read on them without consent, we won't get full messages or understand what it's saying. I am clairvoyantly seeing a guitar. For some of you, the T on your crush is that they like to play guitar or something to do with music. Like they could have an interest in music, playing musical instruments or just like have a passion when it comes to music. I feel some earth sign energy, but also Leo energy, Gemini energy, but strong earth sign energy, especially Virgo. And I think the T here on your crush is they could have an enjoyment or a passion when it comes to music, whether they want to do it themselves or whether they just like um, to listen to different music and have that come through. So, you know, if you were to ever hang out with them, uh, I do actually encourage it. The T here is I do, and your spirit guides do encourage you hanging out with them and forming a, a friendship to them. You know, first giving them some time and um, giving them a little bit of effort because I see here that your crush is someone that admires and um, you know what's sexy to them when someone puts an effort, when someone shows to them that, you know, they want to do something. I definitely see that. And the sun card could sometimes indicate, you know, friendship, in my opinion. Your person's very intelligent. I, I think they get attracted to the mind, you know. They're very attracted to the mind, to conversations, um, as I close my eyes, I also saw dogs, pets, and we have pets in these images. So your your crush could either have pets of their own, could want pets of their own one day, um, could love pets and animals, could have like a soft spot for them in their heart, um, could even be that type of person that cares for the environment, cares for animals, you know, I feel like if you were to litter in front of this person, they'd be like, don't litter. I feel that type of energy. They they have a caring heart. I do, I do feel that intuitively. Mm, they may have a toxic family, to be honest. I did feel this intuitively from the start. If they have already moved out, for some of you, they could like their own space, their own privacy. Maybe that's why the energy was so protected. Maybe they sort of like unconsciously protect their own energy by, you know, almost like closing themselves off energetically to this toxicness. Does that make sense? Um, like, I feel when they're at home, they like to be in their own comfort. They could be a little bit more introverted. They're still a very fun person to be around with the sun, you know, when they go out. But I do think there is something here about limiting that or being selective of how much they go out or how much effort they give in. They could, you know, go out only once a week or they could go out once a week so that they only have enough money to spend for that night because they want to save. Like, I do feel that energy or they could be more of a homebody where they enjoy being at home. But when they do get out, they can be very fun to be around. They can be very extroverted, um, you know, like an introvert, extrovert. That's what I feel from your person's energy. I, I do feel a lot of creativity from them creativity is good for their soul or even just listening to music watching movies because you know your person your crush may look at movies and film you know as an art which it is um you know may love to admire art in some way you know this toxic family the reason why it's coming up in this tea reading is to kind of warn you ahead of time um I sh not just because of this image, but I strongly intuitively feel that your crush wants to be a little bit more free. And I strongly intuitively feel they like their own space from their family. Like, if they still live with their family, it's like when they're in their room, they're in their room. Do not come in my room. It's it's like they they enjoy their privacy maybe because their privacy was taken away from them or invaded on 
But I strongly feel intuitively, not just because of the cards, that their family could be quite materialistic and quite ego-driven in some way. Um, like I heard the word narcissistic, of course I'm not a medical professional, I can't diagnose anyone, but I do feel the energies and I have dealt with narcissists myself where I know what the energy feels like, but of course I could be wrong. But they they do feel a little bit ego driven. And it seems that like your person, your crush, I keep saying your person. Um, even when I bring up their family's name, I almost hear them going like, oh, like it's irritating to them um, because I see their family being quite nitpicky, being someone that cares a lot about their reputation, being very materialistic. I almost feel this person, like let's say, for example, they have a dog and they have a pet at home with their family, you know, and let's say they want to play with the pet. And it's like, no, don't don't play because it's going to make this carpet dirty. It's like, it gives me that type of energy where it's like you can't even move around in the home because you're scared to make it dirty or you're scared to bump something over where you don't feel free. And I, I feel like in this person's home, like I'm seeing they could be a little bit more wild and free in their home or in their apartment or in their room. Like even a little bit messy, but not not dirty because I do feel like that energy here where this person likes cleanliness they are very clean themselves but but sometimes like they like a little bit of that freeness do you get what I mean like even if I feel like even if you had to go in a car drive with this person I feel like they're very free like if they had to put on music you know, they'd sing it to the top of the lungs, you know, like if they're out in public, they're very much their authentic self, their free self, and their family may not like that. And now I hear your crush saying, enough with the family. <laughs> but I guess this is just to warn you. I heard the word overbearing, okay? That's a T on your crush. Now, with that being said, I do feel your crush is open to love. You know, how I saw the love letter in the beginning and I've been almost dancing around that. Um, you know, we're we're asking about the tea here, so we're getting it. I do feel they're open to love. I do feel they're quite a romantic person, my pal twos, but and I think that's where the perspective change comes in here with Amethyst and the High Priestess. They may not fully be emotionally available. Or if they are emotionally available, they may, their family may have hurt them so much where they don't fully know what healthy love is. They haven't fully experienced the healthy love. And what I want to say from this is it doesn't mean that they're not open to that healthy love. It doesn't mean that they treat you badly because, you know, when we look at a paper cut or something slightly, um, like if we had to compare it to a letter slightly hurting us, it's not like something so big where it's like the end of the world. You know, you and this person, if you were to ever date, could have a little bit of paper cuts as a metaphor but I don't necessarily think they'd hurt you intentionally or hurt you badly I think there would just be a little bit of disagreements here and there or a little bit of like um, them looking at things from maybe like an unhealthy perspective based on their past but I also don't think it's such a red flag I don't think it's a deal breaker but it's just something to be aware of because in the the world in reverse here tells me that they haven't fully let go of the things that have happened here and with the 10 of wands i'm getting the impression you know they're carrying a lot of emotional um i want to say the word baggage but i don't like that word from this situation Okay, and the tea on your crush is that although there is that side to them, 
you know, they can grow, they can learn because we do have the Hierophant here and we have the Six of Pentacles. So maybe it just takes someone, you know, showing them the right perspective. And I say the right perspective lightly with a grain of salt because there are many right perspectives and no one perspective is just right. Do you get what I mean? But maybe it just takes someone giving them that key of knowledge that will help them in the end. Because Six of Pentacles is about generosity. The Hierophants is all about learning lessons, uh, taking keys of wisdom from those situations. And I can tell you, like, I've seen with myself where I've held on to things with my family trauma where I didn't realize until someone pointed it out. And then I was like, oh, you know, you're right about that. Do you get what I mean? So... It's not a deal breaker, but it's just something to be aware of because I have to be honest here. Um, but other than that, I do see your crush being a very loving and romantic person. I think when they really give their heart to someone, they give their all. I see your crush being that type of person. Um, kind of gives me a Scorpionic vibe <laughs> too. Um, like all or nothing. It's either all or nothing. Um, the love with them is very intense. I almost feel that energy like if you were to date this person and you were to be very serious, it wouldn't just be like till death do us apart. It would be like <laughs> forever. Like I feel that energy from your person and I feel like they're a very pure soul. I think they have a very good heart. Their heart is in the right place. They're a very romantic person, um, very loyal because swans, I see swans as monogamous creatures, so they're very loyal. I think they're a little bit wary of who they let into their heart at first, because they are so intense in terms of love. There's like a protective shield around their heart. It's not to say that they're closed off or guarded. I think it's just discernment. I think for you... If you were to get to know this person, I see you getting to know them more on the mental level, you know, forming a friendship with them, having conversations with them, learning about them, learning about their mind and their heart. And then I feel as they get comfortable with you, especially with talking here, your person, your crush loves to talk, loves conversations, loves that mental connection. And if you were to really um, put in the time and effort on that sense, in the sense of like, let's say, for example, you greet your crush and you say, you know, hi, how's it going? And then they're like, oh, um... Uh, I'm dealing with this situation where I took my dog to the vet and then next week you see them again and you're like hey how's your dog from the vet you know that shows um, an example of that is like just the showing of like okay I care I remembered what you said so that example basically explains like how your crush is in a sense where they they admire thoughtful thoughtfulness and i think when they're looking for love they're not looking at the superficial teas like yes um they are very attracted to you pile too there is an attraction they feel towards you they do see you as physically attractive in some way but i don't feel that's all they're looking for and i don't think that's something that really draws them to a person I don't think they just look at looks I think they look more at the mental connection specifically I keep getting that and I think they admire generosity loyalty um, a person having the same values as them I do see them putting a lot of time and effort towards wanting to create a success of something something they really enjoy so this could be a passion they have this could be within their career this could be within their studies you know their dream job what I don't know what it is but there's something they're enjoying here that they really want to give all their time and effort to so you know we mentioned music let's say your person has a dream of an aspiration of being a musician um, and they want to put all their time and effort towards that that's an example of the energy but it doesn't have to be um, it could also be their career their goals their endeavors they're very determined when it comes to that 
like nothing's going to stop them. And I think with you, um, I think with you, they're looking at you. They are, they are looking at you. They have noticed you here. Look at the eye. So this is judgment with Amazonite. They have noticed you. They have looked at you. What do they think of pile two? What were their impressions of pile two? What were their impressions of pile two when they noticed pile two? Or check pile two out? <laughs> I kind of feel like they were looking at you a lot more. They are a very fun person. Like, I feel like if you were to, you know, spend time with them, you'd maybe have a laugh or you'd maybe enjoy your, your time spent with them. They are fun. I keep feeling this person's a free spirit. That's the T on your crush. Okay. So we have temperance with Lupita Light. So they think that you're someone very... I'm hearing fair and balanced. I know that's the justice card's meaning. <laughs> but I'm hearing fair and balanced. Uh, but the first thought that came to mind with this card is like you being... A very peaceful soul with the dolphins here you being someone very wise and I think they are attracted to that sort of wisdom you exude from your vibe um, and they do see you as very playful they do see you as someone that is very patient and balanced and flowy is the word I get you go with the flow. We have the moon with moonstone. They see you as someone a lot more deep. A lot more... A lot more to you than meets the eye. That's what they think of you. That there's a lot more to you than what they could just think based off surface level judgments. And they are willing to get to know the deeper sides of you. They do think that you're someone that feels things quite deeply. And they do think that you're someone that is quite connected to your own internal gut feelings. Okay, we have the Four of Swords with Amber. So they think you're very chilled and laid back. And they like that quality about you. Um, I feel the throat chakra energies. In the sense of sometimes being scared to say certain things. So they may feel as though you want to say something to them but you haven't said it or they may feel or think as though this is just their thoughts it doesn't have to be true as though you're a little bit too chilled and laid back where um you sometimes don't fully speak what you want to say okay we have the ace of swords with tiger's eye We have the Nine of Swords with Black Onyx. Hmm. This is my judgment here, not, not your crushes. But I do think you're so intuitive that you may sometimes pick up on energies around you. And if you deal with overthinking, intrusive thoughts, worrying, um, ruminating, I hear. That's a sign to cleanse your energy because I do think you're so psychic and so intuitive, Pile 2. I mean, you're showing up as the moon, the high priestess. We have the amethyst crystal on one of the cards. That even celestite on one of the cards. That um, I think you're just very sensitive to those energies. So you could even be picking up on worries and fears of other people. So just protect your energy pile too. But I think your person, your crush, thinks that you're very chilled and laid back. But there can also be a, or at least this is what they think. They they think that there's a um, overthinking kind of side to you with the Nine of Swords. And that you may feel so deeply, care so deeply that you may sometimes overthink, you know, what to say or... Um, things like that. With the Ace of Swords, they do and are attracted to the way you think. Um, they do want to get to know you better on the mental level. We have the Seven of Coins with Sulfur, Seven of Pentacles, Four of Cups with Pink Halite, King of Swords with Black Spinel, 
and six of swords with Aragonite. I'm as I look at this road here, I'm hearing that song that's like I walk this road alone or something along those lines. I don't know what it's called. Let me just Google it quick. I think it's Green Day Boulevard of Broken Dreams. I think so, I don't know. I think they sort of analyzed you, my pal twos, if I'm gonna be honest. They may think as though you have gone through a lot of your life feeling alone, feeling misunderstood. And I, I could be wrong, but this is, you know, your crush's perception of you. The page of coins is like at the back of the deck with the seven of wands, five of wands, and right behind that, the nine of wands. So it's like your crush may think as though, you know, you've been through certain challenges within your relationships or connections like maybe had some karmic connections around you that were very challenging or at least this is like what they pick up on from you from analyzing you I don't know if it's true or not but they've been watching you without you noticing that's a T on your crush <laughs> um and I'm laughing because they've been watching you which is so funny to me because you're asking about your crush and I do think there is attraction here. I do think they're open to to some sort of, you know, communication with you. But I do think that they also think you've been hurt, that you have a little bit of this protective layer up as well. And they do think that you are, um, you know, moving away from that energy and working on yourself to to heal this. They do think that they'd have a lot of good conversations with you, um, just based off analyzing you. We have the Wheel of Fortune with Serpentine. We have the King of Wands with Larimar. We have the Ten of Cups with Rose Quartz. We have the Six of Cups with Pink Opal. We have the Nine of Coins with Budstone. And the Queen of Swords with Black Diamond. T on your crush. Now I feel pile one's energy seeping through. <sighs> they may still have or still be talking to their ex. So I just say be careful of that. Spirit showed me a door open to a toxic or a connection that was not maybe toxic but had like a lot of pain because Spirit showed me like a door that's still open, right? And then clouds with like rain so I take that since it's opposite the ten of cups like they're still leaving the door open to a past connection um so I just say be careful of that but the advice here with the tea is you know form a a conversation with them and grow it naturally and you know you may see things eventually change where they completely let go of this because I do think um, conversation is going to get you to that place you want to be with this person and taking note of their interests, you know, like I'm getting that energy from this person and I think things could change here in your relationship to them, that's the T I see here and they are open to your energy, I do feel. So this is where I'll leave your reading part two. I really hope this reading resonated. If it did, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I can't wait to see you in my next reading. Bye. Hi there, my pal number threes. If you chose this fire agate crystal and the ace of wands from the tarot of the divine, this reading is for you. We're going to be taking a look at the tea on your crush. Okay, so... I do strongly feel your crush could be very creative or could create have like a creative mind like a lot of creative ideas I feel like my jaw has been clenched even though I haven't clenched my jaw at all it, like my jaw feels sore now getting into your reading your crush may deal with stress around them that they sometimes clench their jaw um they may sometimes deal with worries or want to say certain things but be 
afraid to, you know, speak and communicate their truth to those around them. Ace of Wands could indicate that your crush is not only a very creative person, but um, <laughs> I'm also getting... Okay, if you're not over 18, please skip over this message. I just got this intuitively and I feel like weird for even seeing this. But I, I do see they are a person with a high sex drive, okay? Um... And I do think this could also indicate, like, they have a very attractive body, that they have a very attractive, like, look and face to them. But they could also be kind of attracted to you, or, like, they could be attracted to you, open to it, you know. Because we even have the roses here. So that's making me feel like first thoughts and... You know, I shuffled the deck and we have the Ace of Wands as your image. It could represent, you know, them. <laughs> Look what cards wanting to pop out. Nine of Cups, which is all about wish fulfillment. Clarify Nine of Cups, please. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Five of Swords. Knight of Cups. Okay, I do see they are open to romantic connections. But they do also have strong boundaries up. Or they want to at least have stronger boundaries up going into going into their next connection. Because I, I do see something about experiencing betrayal from someone close to them. This has been a theme in all three piles. Or maybe they could sometimes self-betray. Because the Eight of Swords is like right behind your justice. That's what I spoke about. Like sometimes they want to say something but they hold back. They, they don't say what's really on their mind out of fear. Maybe this person is also crushing on you but not telling you how they feel. And out of that, that's a little bit of self-betrayal because we have the Queen of Swords here as well behind the Two of Cups. And then the Five of Pentacles, which can sometimes represent being left out in the cold. But in this case, I'd say, like, intuitively, I feel fear of rejection. So, you know, we ask for the tea on your crush, so this is it. Two of Cups, which is all about relationships, romantic connections specifically, usually, not always. Um, the tea on their crush, please. Pile three, please. The tea on their crush, please. Pile three. Okay, let's look at the cards you have. Seven of Swords at the back of the deck. This isn't necessarily your crush's energy. Keep that in mind. We have the Nine of Swords. We have the Fool card. Three of Swords. This is, to me, screaming, I'm scared of getting my heart broken. So I'm scared of even trying to find new love because I'm scared of getting my heart broken. So they could have been heartbroken in the past. They could have been betrayed in the past. And there's something here about fear of speaking up. Fear of saying how they truly feel. Not only fear of being rejected, but fear of like, what if I do open up my heart? And this is exactly what I've wished for. What if I do open my heart and, you know, like we create this deep romantic connection and then someone betrays me. Um, not just like in terms of you, but just in terms of new relationships in general with the fool. But I do feel there is some type of attraction towards you where they haven't told you yet. And I'm not being told by spirit to... For some of you, you know, if you tried to initiate something, 
I think this person's so fearful. Maybe for some of you, they'd run. But for others of you, they'd um, lean into it, just depending on where they're at in their journey. But I feel they've been so heartbroken. I even feel it in my chest. I feel the heartbreak, heartbreak in my chest. Sorry for my words. Like a, I slipped on my words there. But it's like, maybe that tells me like this person doesn't really feel comfortable talking about these things. Now I feel that clenched jaw again. They may sometimes chew on their cheek. Specific message for some. It's not going to resonate with everyone because this is a general reading. Okay, we have the Page of Cups. We have the Magician. We have the Six of Cups. Judgment. They're scared to recreate what happened in the past. Because Six of Cups is all about the past. Magician is all about creation. Three of Swords is heartbreak. So it's like they, they're scared they get into a new relationship and they just recreate the past all over again. I want to give this person a hug. Like I want to cry for this person. They're so fearful of heartbreak and pain that they don't even want to open up their hearts. And I completely understand this because I've been at this point in my life, you know, and it's not easy to go through. I literally feel tears in my eyes. I'm feeling this person's pain. Keep in mind, I'm clairsentient, so I pick up on emotions too. But I almost see this person like wiping away their tears very fast. Like they're scared of showing people their vulnerability. They may even cry with their hands in their face. Specific message for someone here. And I think when I look at this page of cups, you know, he's walking and he's enjoying so much. I just noticed this now. And, you know, there's this bunny rabbit here that is bouncing around with the string. But he doesn't realize that the string is like tangling around his foot. He doesn't realize that he's about to fall, maybe. Maybe he doesn't see this rabbit here because his eyes are closed and trips over this rabbit. So as I read this intuitively, you know, the page of cups could represent this person's inner child because here we see the knight of cups grown adult or teenager or whatever age you are and then we ha see the younger version of them oh I felt like my third eye just open and expand so I'm picking up on this person's inner child here that's confirmation for me like this person's inner child has been unexpectedly hurt what do rabbits mean what do bunnies mean spiritually let's see Okay, rabbit symbolizes fertility, agility, and intuition. Its spiritual energy emanates a grateful dance of quick thinking and adaptability, leading us to embrace opportunities and navigate challenges with nibble precision. I'm also reading here it could represent abundance and transformation. So, it also, for some, like website, it says creativity Let's say, for example, we mentioned creativity. Let's say they were a child and they really liked to paint, for example. But then their mom or dad told them or like an old sibling that used to bully them told them like you suck at painting like and that has forever like run their life where now they're scared to even try it because they want to try it, but they're scared, you know, that they suck at painting. It's it's giving me that impression like. It may seem small to to the human eye because like I didn't even notice this at first. It may even be like a pain we don't notice, like small little betrayals from those we love, like in the words that they use. Oh my gosh. Okay, I notice we have the page of swords coming out, like in the next set of cards. So it could have been like the way people spoke to this child, you know? That caused worries within them, fear within them, fear to try new things. Because I do think underneath this fear, they're a very fun, free-spirited person, but it's like this fear holds them back. 
I do see a curious cat, like a curious person that, you know, wants to be adventurous. And yeah, I see that energy. I see a very unique person. And I see your person, your crush being someone that wears their heart on their sleeve, a very romantic soul. And I do see them being someone very, like, curious to learning about themselves, where the sphere stems from. We have the Nine of Pentacles, Ten of Wands, Ace of Swords, Five of Cups, Three of Coins. I sort of get the intuitive feeling like this person was a scapegoat at home. They were the scapegoat in their family because the Ten of Wands here with the skull is making me think of ancestors and generational trauma. And the Ace of Swords would be like how that's affected them mentally, Five of Cups affected the way they've thought about themselves, the way they've gone after certain things, affected the way they thought about like things where they maybe think more like fear-based, have maybe like more of a fear-based mentality based off these disappointments where the mind almost thinks that way to protect us because it's dealt with so much disappointment that it doesn't want to expand. Let's say their destiny is to be a creative person, but it's like their family has said this to them. I feel a solar plexus wound. Their family has broken them down. Or their childhood. Or someone in their... I feel family for most. Like something in childhood has broken them down. Whether it be bullies, teachers, a caregiver. I don't know. But some someone has broken them down with their words. This is really sad tea spirit. Because the solar plexus is all about our worth and, you know, how we believe in ourselves, our sense of happiness, our own sense of inner power, our creativity, you know, the way we kind of view ourselves. And that's been wounded. And I feel like as they've gone through life, I see people kind of just projecting onto them because I do see them being someone so amazing, being someone that embodies this kind of like childlike happiness and joy. Um being someone so talented that they don't even realize it, that other people just project onto them. Why is this being revealed to pile three? The seven of wands. The tower. I don't think they'd necessarily want you to know this information, their highest self, king of wands. But maybe, because we have the High Priestess at the back of the deck, um, maybe, uh, maybe their human self wouldn't want you to know this, but maybe their higher self is here kind of like giving you this information so that if you were to maybe become friends with them or start a relationship with them because these cards are popping out here, Three of Cups, um, Four of Cups and Three of Wands, it would be helpful for you to, to push past that protective guard they have. Because the Seven of Wands can sometimes represent like a protective guard we have, um, like a defensiveness, a guard we have up. It can mean different things just based on context of the other cards around. But, you know, since we spoke about fear and Ten of Swords is wanting to come out like the kind of betrayals they've gone through, it makes sense that they'd have a, a little bit of a guard up or a little bit of trust issues. Um, so I see it's almost like their higher self is letting you hear this so that, you know, when you do speak to them, when you do form a friendship with them, which I do see it's encouraged to form a friendship with them, to talk to them, see where it goes, um, Maybe take it a little bit slower with this person because the tower here tells me some, but some kind of healing ha happens like slowly in the meantime, you know, with the three of wands next to it. It happens step by step, like little by little. 
And that's not to say they need to f- be fully healed before they can date someone, but it's just that this person may have trust issues where it may take a little bit of time for them to open up. In this case, like as I'm reading their energy and with the King of Wands, I do see them as a very eccentric person, as a very passionate person, very determined, you know, very creative. They have that kind of spark to them. But it's like the people around them have tried to dim their light, tried to put water over that spark. Um, Crazy ass message here. <laughs> um... If this person has a mother or grandmother that has passed away, specific message for someone, I feel their energy here, or it's like a feminine ancestor with the empress here, and it's like, they think that you'd be the perfect match to this person, because we have the four of wands, the queen of cups, ten of cups, and the reason they say so is because you're showing up as this queen of cups, regardless of your gender, where... You're, you're truly in tune with your emotions, your compassion, your empathy. This message wouldn't have even been given to you if you weren't in touch with that empathetic side of your heart. Because if it was a situation where you were going to use this against this person, the information wouldn't have been given to you in the first place. So what I take from this, you know, with this message coming out, maybe this is an ancestor for most of you, but like... They sort of approve of you, like, going towards this person, and that's the T here. Because, I mean, Ten of Cups is all about long-term fulfilling connections that make us happy. Four of Wands is a celebration, so maybe their ancestor would celebrate that because it's like they'd learn from this faster because the Hierophant is popping up in the Eight of Cups. So maybe they'd sort of let go of this a lot faster or learn from this a lot easier with you by their side not necessarily that they need you or that you need to sort of like save them because I know some will like listen to this and like feel empathetic but it's like it's also not your responsibility to save them that's what I want to say um but You know, it's also up to you what you take from this information, whether that's like something you want to go forward with. Because I do see like if you were to be a partner to this person, they'd need a lot more emotional support. And I think that's the tea we're kind of getting here. So this is where I'm going to leave your reading pile three. I really hope this reading resonated. If it did, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I can't wait to see you in my next reading. Bye.